Guys, national consumer debt is absolutely insane. $16.9 trillion. Savings accounts are depleting at a rapid rate. Credit card interest rates are increasing almost to 29%. And you know what's crazy is their negative amortization because their interest rate is at 29% and they only make you pay about 2% on the minimum balance. Your balance on your credit cards is never gonna get paid off. And so with $16.9 trillion in debt, almost $400 billion increase over the last quarter in the national debt. It is absolutely insane. So we're gonna react to Graham guys and try to figure out what he's got to say about the national debt crisis and why you gotta stop spending money because there's gonna be changes coming to all of your financial pictures and we want you to be ready. What's up Graham, it's Guys here. So no need to worry about rising interest rates, high inflation, heated consumer spending, or Microsoft's new AI exposing personal information out of vengeance because instead, the latest threat to our economy is said to be the fact that Americans are quickly running out of savings to the point where pretty soon, they'll have nothing left. In fact, if you don't believe me, the personal savings rate just hit one of its lowest points ever in history with the average American saving just 3.4% of their income, credit card debt just soared to a new all-time high of $1 trillion, and auto payments are falling behind at the fastest pace since 2010. That's why we really need to talk about why 2023 could be the year of the personal debt crisis, how this could mark the end of the buy and hold strategy, and what you could do about this to either make or save a lot of money on today's episode of You Can Now Get Verified on Instagram for $11.99 a month. Although oh, before we, we start... That. We should get verified on Instagram. I was calling the auto debt crisis um, like a year ago when I realized that the automotive companies were doing the exact same thing that the mortgage companies were doing in 2006 and 2007. The auto crisis is, is all screwed up because they don't check financials. I could walk into a dealer and get a $100,000 Mercedes and they were working African Jack in the Box making two crunchy tacos for a dollar. Like it's crazy, but those dudes could drive whatever it is that they wanted. Where this becomes a problem is when they can't pay it back and those auto loans tend to be at pretty high interest rates the auto loan crisis is brutal and we're not even seeing what it's really gonna be because not only are people not gonna be able to afford their cars they're gonna be able to afford their houses if you want to make money on this you're gonna be able to pick up really nice used cars that got repoed really inexpensive you're gonna hold for about two years there's gonna be quantitative easing in the economy everyone's gonna forget just like they forgot about COVID and Fauci working in the Keebler Elf store and all of a sudden cars are gonna go up in value again and that Prius that you pick picked up for like six racks is gonna go for 12 just because you bought it at a, at a low point. The low point in the auto market is coming probably within the next six months. So pay attention to your pizza delivery guy. If he's rolling up in an M Benz, you know he lied on his credit application and you're gonna be able to pick up that car for half the cost. All right, Grammy, you're into something. Just consider this, trading commissions were as high as 1% in the 1980s and even just 20 years ago, low fee brokerages were still charging $7 a trade, which at that point I remember was a bargain. Others go so far as to eliminate that cost entirely, like our sponsor, public.com, who passes as many savings back to the <laughs> that was fantastic. Dude, he had it so pulled in. That was fantastic. Good job, Graham. I'm about to go get an account on this business. <laughs> Investors are beginning to dump stocks at the fastest pace in decades. The average holding period for an individual stock in the United States is now just 10 months, down from five years in the 1970s. Man, people holding on to these stocks like their marriages. They're done within a year. That's valid. Like people playing the stock market right now is, is nuts. I just got my uh, 1099 from uh, my wealth management group. It lost me about $22,000 last year, which isn't crazy, right? But that's a Honda Civic. But I can afford to take a $22,000 loss and it's not gonna really hurt my bottom line, but like most people, that's that's their life savings. In 2018, Forbes released an article that the average American couldn't save more than $500 or couldn't come up with $500 for an emergency. That's absolutely nuts. And if you're gonna play your money in stocks because it's a new, it was a hot thing during 2020, everyone was downloading Robinhood probably at a greater rate than their Tinder profiles. Like. It's, it's just dangerous, it's gambling. And when you're in a bear market, meaning the market's going down, it's gonna crash. Like you're you're at really exposing yourself to risk and damage their financial profile. And your wife's gonna divorce you within 10 months if you lose all your money on Robinhood. Cause that's just idiotic. She's gonna be like, hey, you lost how much on Bitcoin? I don't know why she has that accent though. What kind of accent was that? <laughs> She's like, ain't no grits for you, honey. He's looking at her, you're gonna get back on stage, mama. <laughs> 
you have a 63% chance of the stock market going up in value within a month and 100% in 20 years. So even if your initial timing is terrible, history shows that you're still likely to make a profit statistically if you do absolutely nothing. So here's the thing, if you do anything for 20 years, it's gonna work out. Unless your wife cheated on you, then it's not gonna work out. But like at 20 years, you probably forgave her and you're probably gonna forgive your stocks for dipping out. So just keep it. If you really want it, if you really wanna play, just hold. You know, quick side note, Warren Buffett made more money on coca-cola than the ceo because he just held on to their stock i'm already fat and white like i just need the money like knowledge <laughs> <laughs> there's a level of like where a man can be thick and rich and still pull whatever he wants like i'm nowhere near that rich enough like <laughs> There's a scale, yeah. The fact is, over 80% of middle-income households cut down on their savings or pulled money from existing savings to make yep. ends meet in the last three months of 2022. And the more time goes on, the worse these numbers get. Just take credit card spending, for example. Unpaid balances recently increased by 6.6%, bringing the total amount owed to $1 trillion, That's which means we dough. saw the largest increase on record since 1999. And I call the credit card company and I have it waived. As long as you're not constantly doing it, they're usually pretty good about like helping with that. Where, where that really screws you is if you're like over 30 days late because then it reports to the credit bureau. This guy, this guy has some good points. All this is great, like debt sucks, but there's an easy way to solve it, make more money. Make more money. You don't have a debt problem, you have an income problem. If you can solve your income problem, then you don't have a debt problem. So you go get more money. You can go get a part-time job at In-N-Out, that's probably pay you a little bit. I'd probably say drive for Uber, but you can just get a better paying business job. Like uh, go become a certified financial planner, an insurance agent, real estate agent, a loan officer. These are all jobs that have like high ticket items that pay a lot more money. And then you don't have to, you can do that on your spare time on weekends. And it doesn't really feel like you're working in a nine to five. You go do that. Let's just say you become a loan officer. You close a half a million dollar deal in your first month being licensed. You just made five racks. It's probably more than you make at your current job. So I think what all this is great, uh, as far as the paying off debt, you gotta use the avalanche, the avalanche method. You always wanna pay off your highest interest debt first. You can DM us and, and I'll help you out. Email me at info at I can set up a consultation with you for like how to be able to manage your debt a lot easier. I come from no money and I've had a lot of debt and I've paid it all off and you know I continue to live my life that way. So good, good stuff. Um, really, if you want to take any pointers and don't watch the whole 12 minute video, you don't have a debt problem, you have an income problem. Go make more income. How do you make more income? You get a job that pays commission on high ticket items. Go sell houses, go sell money, go sell insurance. You do any of that, your income and your debt problems all solved in a matter of a few months. And, and here's the thing, the, the only thing you really need to pay attention to is how to subscribe by clicking the link below. So subscribe to my channel and you'll be in good shape.